Welcome to another episode of The Game Loons, and of course, we're back, um, and this is your humble host, Demir, and of course, we have our main man here, Carlos, back at it again. Yep, back at it again. You know, we had to come back uh, a week later, not not a month later, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, last episode, I think it was a really good episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, like we mentioned near the end of the episode, there's so much that has gone on in our nerd world to discuss. I mean, it, it, it's a plethora of topics. We just were so excited to get back to it and, yeah, you know, talk all things nerd. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm going to give the floor to you. Like, you know, I like to give off the pressure to somebody else. <laughs> um, so what, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to hit off right off the bat? So I think with all that's happened in the past couple of months, you know, last week we, we spoke a lot about a lot, but I, I don't think we spoke um, in depth about the holy grail of nerdum today, which is the MCU. We got so many updates to the MCU. So many things are happening and I, 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 we need to dive right in. We just need to go into it. Yeah. So um, you had a question for me earlier. Um, you mentioned the uh, the the current phase is called the multiversal saga, right? Something like the, that. Yeah, the multiverse saga. So um, during Comic Con, Kevin Feige uh, got on stage. You know, he went over what was going on in Phase Four, Phase Five, what's to come in Phase Six, and he now uh, he has dubbed it the multiverse saga. We had the Infinity Saga. Um, for the first three phases of that was 15 years of our life and now we have the multiverse saga so my question to you just uh first and foremost what do you think of the name um yeah so i mean i i love the person I, I do love the name right so one thing that always kind of irritated me a little bit about the mcu is that it's gotten so big it's like it's like a corporation right it's yeah. gotten yeah. so big that it's sort of lost its creative identity right and okay. this thing this thing that we're that the mcu is doing right now right as com compared to what they did in the beginning very self-contained very hero focused stories which did result into in, uh, in movies that could be kind of like it can feel a little generic can feel a little samey right even now they still have that sa same sort of problem yeah there's gonna be genre films right exactly so, so i fear that as things escalate, we're going to lose that ability to sort of kind of step back and really sympathize with these characters. And I acknowledge that this is something that takes time, but I still fear that to some extent, especially since parts of the phase that we're currently in yeah. have not been received well by some fans and me myself. Like, yeah, they're, um, um, I would say that phase four, if you just, um, you know, went online, there's there's an overall sentiment from a lot of fans that uh, this phase is the phase of what is happening. <laughs> How is this connected to this? How is this connected to that? And it's, um, I agree to an extent with what you're saying. Um, it's the problem that the MCU has created for themselves. Marvel has created this own conundrum for themselves because when, you know, phase one happened, it's just five movies, you know, uh, r regular origin stories and then a sequel. And then we get this uh, Avengers movie, which back then we didn't know what was happening. We didn't know um, cinema history was happening yeah. with properties intertangling, coming together. We at, at that point, I just thought, oh, there's a movie coming out. Cool. I'm going to go watch it. I didn't know I was stepping into history you know, yeah. when I walked into that theater. <laughs> but it's really what it was. We had never seen that before um then phase two happens it's a little bit more of the same and then phase three happens and they just ramp it up a notch and then we have uh this bow that they put at the end this was the infinity saga this was Perfection. all planned all along from the inception you know things like that which um is great i, I think you can look at those first 23 films and and just really see like wow um the, the arch, the, the progress you made with those movies, but that created an issue of, well, if you have the master plan and I don't understand the plan as a fan, uh, I'm going to question you. <laughs> that's perfect, actually, that you perfectly like, yeah. summarized my thoughts. I think I think that's the instinct in all of us because, I mean, let's face it, if you're, if you're a nerd fan, you're, 
you're pompous. You're, yeah, you're entitled. You're entitled. You're uh, with with, and, and some of that is allowed to a degree. You're True. Like, you're you are an expert in this subject, and you know <laughs> how it should. You feel, and you probably have some credence to it. You know how it should go. So yeah. like, you know, we 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 spend hours watching this. You and folks like you and I, we we debate about it yeah and talk about it for hours is the whole reason you know we come together to even do the show so yeah we have a sense of ownership so when you own something i mean it's kind of like anything when you mm -hmm. own something and you don't or you feel like you own something and you don't know what's happening you don't know what's going on especially with phase four yeah how uh, you know it's kind of like you know what i just thought of it it's kind of like the end of game of thrones mm. where we had this ownership over these characters. We love these characters for a and decade, then, and then a season, a, a, a final season happens, and then you, you're you left asking yourself, what, what was the reason? What was the point? What was the point? Why didn't we address this, or, we, or this, or, or this, we, or this? I think, you know, one of the biggest things, I, I don't know if I'm calling this a flaw, because I just tend to trust Kevin Feige. <laughs> yeah. How have we not addressed in the MCU, since Eternals happened, that there is a man statue coming out of the ocean. How has that oh, not been addressed? I totally forgot about it. You're right. So here's here's one issue. You forgot about it. Yeah, right? yeah. And then two, I mean, how have we not had this addressed in any shape or form? I think there is, I think there might have been an Easter egg about it in She-Hulk, which just came out. Me, I, I I don't know if I'm remembering. There's a lot that of Easter eggs on that. There's show. a lot of Easter eggs in that show. Um, QR codes, they're, they're going crazy on that one. <laughs> um, but there is that sense of what is really happening. Um, I think it's a problem, and the MCU created. Now, with all that being said, I'm gonna put my money on Kevin. Me too. Me I'm, too. Um, I, I am. I, I, it might sound fanboyish. Um, I was literally looking for his merch online. I was trying to see, like, in Feige, I trust. If I can put that on a t-shirt, if I can put that on a hat, um, I would love it. Because I, I do think, um, in the end, I think once we get to phase, the end of phase six, right? In two, three years. And we look at it as a whole. I think it, I, I truly do believe it all makes sense. Yeah. But we're not in the future. <laughs> That's true. Um, you, you made, you made a great point, like. In the beginning, we weren't aware of, of what was happening. I think when I was a when I was a kid, I remember going to see The Incredible Hulk, um, that movie with with Ed Norton. I remember I remember loving. It. You know, it's funny. I still love that movie. That's a good movie. It's still and one of I my think, favorites. I think it gets um, a lot of crap that it doesn't deserve. I think any of the um, anything you could find wrong about that movie, I think you can literally attribute it to the year it was made true the cgi the cgi can be is is both good and bad i've rewatched the movie multiple times it, it is both good and bad some of the story points is like okay but it's i mean it, it, it it's a pseudo origin movie and you know like you said um in the beginning of the mcu uh, some of the films while they had their identity sometimes they felt like a generic same. a generic and we all know the generic superhero movie well, i like to look at it as the generic trilogy mm. um that you know spider-man established x-men established all these hero all these other movies that came before established you have the origin movie where you have to sit for an hour and wait for the hero to become <laughs> the hero that you know will become the hero and then you get cool stuff exactly then you get the perfect the perfect sequel. movie the sequel because you're already the hero and you just go through the perfect storyline. They get the perfect villain. It's the perfect superhero movie. And then the third it film. It falls it apart. All. Yep. Because of corporate greed. <laughs> yep. It, it just it fucks it up. <laughs> there's the executive the, interference. The third movie just sucks. Yeah. The third movie always pretty much sucks. The, re the reason why I, I even brought up The Incredible Hulk is because um, I personally love that movie. And I think it's one of the few movies where I could honestly say that it was miscast. I'm sorry, Liv Tyler is not good. She's not good in anything, really. 
<laughs> she, she's, I mean, and, 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 and I like Norton. Liv Tyler. I like Liv Tyler. I, I like, I like, I like her too, but she's not good. Um, uh, there like is, there is more to be wanted from that Betty Brant. Absolutely, Betty Brant. Yeah. Yep. Um. Nope. Betty Ross. Betty Brant. No. Is Betty Ross. Betty Ross. Yep. Yeah. No. She was, She did not work. Uh. No. And you know what's funny? Didn't didn't Jennifer. Coolidge, no, not Coolidge. God, Jennifer. Say, Coolidge. No, 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 no. The, oh my gosh, I'm blinking on the name. <laughs> Leave it in the comments because I because this is what I would do if I was listening to a podcast. I'd be screaming at my speaker. Basically, uh, Paul Bettany's wife. She was just in Top Gun Maverick. I know who you talk about. Um, her name, her first name is Jennifer, and I'm blinking on her last name, but I think she played Betty Ross in the Ang Lee Hulk. Ah, I think oh, she I know. Did, and, and I think she did a pretty good yeah, job, too. I, Either way, we need Betty Ross in the MCU. We need a new one. Recast it. It's fine. Please. You already recasted Hulk. It's cool. Um, But I think I know what the point you were trying to make with that Hulk movie. We didn't know that at the end, Iron Man would come out. There was no sense of this is this, then this, then this, then this, then this. And, and it's part of, you know, the issue with pre-planning i think in the end it's all gonna work out me too honestly and 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 really part uh, a majority of what i want to talk about i mean for all that to say for to say you know th- there is an issue with the pre-planning i want to talk about the planning because the planning just looks absolutely sick to me so. well okay i i do want to ask you something so yeah. So I, I get what Kevin Kevin's trying to do, right? He's yeah. trying to to bring that the way that comics tend to work, you know, in its native form. You know, those like big event type of things. Yeah, like right? you have an annual event. Yeah, exactly. And he's treating like directors like the different authors, right? They have their own interpretation of these these characters. Still, like an overarching narrative, like yep. a spiritual sense that you that you come in when you're actually making the story for these characters, right? Yeah. But you know, he's doing it in films and TV and I think he were struggling because of the TV portion of it. Really, I don't think they've mastered that yet, which I think is their biggest, you know, their biggest, you know, unknown. Yeah, yeah, this but is definitely. I, I think it's gonna work out. Yeah, this is definitely. I I think you can just clearly see it's been. Um, I mean, I'll say this: I've enjoyed every single MCU. Me too. Disney Plus show that's come out. Just as a product, um, yes. As yeah, as a product. As a fan, I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can commercially say, as the business, if we're gonna, you know, critique the business, it's been hit or miss. Yeah, uh, a show will hit, Wandavision, and then a show will miss, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and then a show will hit, Loki, and then another show will kind of miss, Hawkeye. Yeah. Then you have a show that like was so great, Moon Knight, and what did it have to do with anything? <laughs> Not- then we have, you know, Miss Marvel and, and, and What If and She-Hulk, personal favorites of mine. You know, oh, oh and, and specifically What If, what does that even have to do with anything? Yeah, and they say it's going to be... Yeah, you know, uh, we're getting we're getting a sequel, a, sec- a second season. Um, so th- th- there's a lot of unknown in the Disney Plus arena. Um, it, it's one of the big differentiators um, between the Infinity Saga and the Multiverse Saga. We didn't have to worry about TV shows back then yeah you know we were talking earlier we both love agents of shield yeah and unfortunately (laughs) it just kind of was like the little brother uh that the mcu pushed aside and never acknowledged what's funny is that in the second season they did try to make it like tie in yeah well even from the first season because um uh our shared favorite mcu movie um winter soldier uh, the winter soldier that directly affects season one of agents of shield um even in one of the later seasons season five they mentioned thanos is coming yeah they did uh very brief it was very like whoa did they really just say that because it had been years since they even mentioned the mcu but i mean it was there i mean even the finale the finale mentions pin particles yeah uh, um or if, if it wasn't pin particles it was going through the um Whatever they use the to quantum, time travel. The quantum realm. Yeah, yes, that's what realm. it was. <laughs> Using the quantum realm to go from one universe to the other. I mean, 
they gave you the blueprint to the multiple cycle. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Agents of Shield rocks. Um, yes. Watch it, please. Watch it. Stream it. But you know, we didn't have to deal with that before. Uh, in in the first half of the, or the first three phases of the MCU. Now we do, and we just gotta see what. Um, I think ultimately it's gonna be a good thing. Um, in the long run, we're getting um, dedicated projects to characters we probably never would have gotten dedicated she projects to. Uh, yeah, mean, uh, sorry, uh, She-Hulk uh, TV show. But you said it, movie. That wasn't happening. Yeah, a She-Hulk true. movie wasn't happening, or and probably a Moon Knight movie wasn't happening ever. And a Miss Marvel movie was probably not happening. <laughs> um, you know, all all these characters, they they at least you know do get an overarching story how they execute i mean that leaves it up to be seen but at least we're getting something um so i i, I like like we're both saying i think i do think it'll be good for the long run but let me let me spit out um what is officially phase four because when it got announced a lot of the movies that are now phase five um were originally announced for phase four and they've done some restructuring um i think that's just evidence that if you think this is a master plan that started from day one i don't think it's that i think it yeah. is ever evolving um which i think is a good thing because you in should the first phases yeah. yeah it happened in the first phases there was a bunch of movies that uh would have been movies that didn't become movies there was going to be an inhumans movie that didn't happen yeah we all know why. And, yeah, we know God. why. So, uh, you know, they're not everything went exactly according to plan, and it shouldn't. You know, yeah. things should change. You know, we should uh, companies should do that, if especially if it's for the better product. But Phase Four officially, this is a mix of um, TV shows and movies, just in order of when they came out. Wandavision, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki. Black Widow, What If, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh, I love them. Eternals, Hawkeye, Spider Man No Way Home, Ugh, Moon Knight, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Miss Marvel, Thor: Love and Thunder, I Am Groot, She Hulk: Attorney at Law, and then we have, I will say, two and a half things left for phase four we have um black panther wakanda forever coming november of this year we know guardians of the galaxy holiday special ah. is coming out should be coming out this christmas season um and there is still um a untitled halloween special that what they say is coming out i didn't I mean, know anything if, about if that. at that if at this point it comes out maybe they push it back till next year but so th those those last two are possible, but we know that's what Phase Four is. I mean, reading it out loud, Phase Four is stacked. Yeah, there's a lot, but with quality, it it, it is. And like I said, Loki is one of my favorite written character studies that I've ever seen. Um, one hundred percent. Overall, I, I think that besides some isolated incidents, it maybe it's, it's a lot more low key than i thought there was because it's, it's not like it's stacked with like super well-known heroes i mean you got she hulk and dr Strange. yeah i mean i think our biggest heroes are gonna be thor and spider-man and yeah, dr Spider strange and, and black panther later down the line and black panther at the end those would be the mainstays but besides that i mean we have some some movies and tv shows that we n would have never thought we've seen and even then the mainstays they went for it. Yeah, they did. Spider Man, that third movie, oh, we would <laughs> never that No Way Home, we would never thought we would get. Stay. What happened in that movie? We would have we dreamed of. Yeah. Um, Multiverse of Madness. Whether or not you thought it lived up to what you thought madness was, they went for it. That's a those movies are straight out of comic books, man. And then Thor: Love and Thunder, um, was idiotic, but. It, it was oh, fine. You, oh, we haven't we haven't talked about that, have no, we? No, we have not. Okay, that's fine. Whether or not you like it, we can talk about that later. <laughs> but um, it did something. You know, it was different. That's true. It was different. At the very least, you could say. Yes, it was. It may be to its detriment, but yes, it was different. It was absolutely... It wasn't... Uh, and you know what? I'll take a, a different Thor movie than a, a boring, typical Thor movie. I'll say that. True, true. 
So we, we we have phase four and then you know we what we really see, I think the, the biggest thing that calls out to me is there is no connected movie at the end. Like we've seen three ah. times in a row. We don't have the Avengers movie to, to cap it off. And those those won't be coming out till like next year, right? The first one? Oh, 2025. So skipping ahead. No, 2024, I believe. No, 2025, yeah. Really? I thought it was 2024. Yep. 20, oh, wow. That's 20, a lot of time. 2025. So, That's pretty good, actually. So, it'll it, the next the last time we got an Avengers movie was 2019. Now, obviously, you know, uh, the pandemic happened. So, uh, I would give the MCU a grace period of nothing came out in 2020. So, erase a year, essentially um and erase half a year of 2021 really because we didn't get back to the theaters until july with black widow so you have a year and a half grace period right but essentially from 2025 to 2019 that's six years if you take out that one and a half four years four and a half three and a half years oh, four so three and a half four ish years since your last avengers movie that's a long time. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we were getting Avengers movies, what, every, every three years? years? Yeah. yeah, I think it's, Avengers yeah, 20, 2012, yeah. 2015, 2018, and then another one yeah. back on 2019. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it, it, it is going to be a long while before we get an Avengers movie. My question to you, do you think right now we should have had a team up movie at the end of phase four, or do you think uh, it's fine? That we end on Black Panther. I'm so glad they didn't do a team up movie. You didn't want one. Okay. No, because one, there's a lot of characters and they're all in different parts of their journey. They they don't need a team up movie because it would definitely feel forced the way the way like Age of Ultron felt felt forced at times. You know what? Uh, Age of Ultron, um, you know, the black sheep of the Avengers movies. I still love that movie, but it's a great movie. But at the same time, it did feel at, at a lot of times. Yeah. Like are we i mean that that would be the first instance where a sequel <laughs> a superhero sequel is not the best movie yeah it was you know just like not. It, it it does it at does a time feel um yeah for lack of a better word for they were too afraid to go anywhere with it because you had thanos in the back line right but they had to come out with an avengers too they're like oh let's use ultron great uh uh james uh, uh spader james spader voiced by james spader and it sucks that even now he's not having gotten more ultra james spader was so good i did james spader voice him in what if i think he did uh i don't know i, I didn't I, see I, I don't remember well they need to bring him back more you don't know, make the whole season two of what if about james. Oh, I mean, yeah, yes uh I, I i do agree um you've been hinting at it since then mm -hmm. there have been so many little drops and hints is ultron still out there comic book wise you know he can be of course um he's a pest in the comics that is <laughs> that that is easy to bring back ultra ultron um i think the the f one of the funniest mcu jokes is it it's it's really day of ultron not age of ultron yeah like with a title like that you you, you sh i expected some sort of time skip come on some type of age just an, age, age, just just an era like just not a not not a day not or a couple even, days yeah it's yeah. a couple days um you know i have to say i i, I uh, agree with you um that the, not having a team up movie in this phase while it does throw it off i think in terms of just like it does feed into that where's this going i do think a, a phase to establish things is a-okay by me yeah of course i think i think actually you know honestly my biggest gripe with the mcu right now and that's probably just from a know-it-all standpoint <laughs> i don't know where a lot of these proper or a lot of these films they take place in the timeline the blip does present a problem of when does this movie take place um it used to be that whenever a, the and the movie would come out it came it took place in that year and then it took place uh after the events of the previous movie um i know in phase three that got jumbled up a little bit with you know obviously captain marvel guardians of the galaxy volume two because that was only three months set after 
the first volume so it's it's not technically wherever it's placed in that release order but i think i read the other day that one of these shows or movies takes place in technically what would be 2025 i need i need a roadmap sorry i, I that's I, true i never give even me thought a, give about me a that ti- give me a timeline map because when does shang chi take place and hmm. then when where where are we with she hulk because we know it's we know she hulk is after yeah. shang chi but if eternals takes place it came out after shang chi but then it takes place only days after avengers endgame but does it only take days after? Because that's what the marketing kind of led with. But the movie was. Oh, we're gonna talk about the, the big man in the sky. And then, and then, yeah, like, let's address that big guy <laughs> yeah. in the ocean. In the, in the ocean, like, uh, there's a lot to be said for of what Phase Four can give us, um, order wise. I think that's really all I want. Not necessarily order in the, uh, in what the, the movies are and the characters. Give me some type of outside. Like, just give me a timeline. I'll take a timeline. Yeah, I I, I think that's. Uh, well, things were much easier back then. Way of easier. course, way it's, easier. This was one of those things because I think what really throws off is the TV shows. Yep, that's another one because you know Wandavision. That's what is that? A couple months after. Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame. And then Doctor Strange, like a. F- not that much time after WandaVision. Not much time after Jeez, WandaVision. Still. And, and Spider Man. In between that, but you have Far From Home. That is technically the summer after. Yeah. And then Thor Love and Thunder. If there's a lot of. Exactly. If, if there's one issue that I don't think it's talked about a lot, it's time. Yeah. Um, uh, a, a lot of convolution. There. We just kind of, you know, set it to the side, really. Yep. Um, and you know what's another thing that I, I thought of? Um, and I think I think we're gonna really see it when we talk about these next two phases, because um, there there is a lot to talk about with them. Um, maybe the phases should have their own little mini names too. Just as an idea, when I'm writing it down, I'm like I'm seeing one, two, three, and then the collective. Like, okay, what what, what was one? Like, yeah, Ooh. like a chapter in a greater. Story. Yeah, you know, like yeah, exactly, like a chapter name. Hmm. The perfect way to describe it. I would do it. Yeah, that would make it. That would make it feel like it's. A, there's a little more cohesion here. Like, what was the point of the first phase? Well, of phase four, really. What was the yeah, point? Yeah, yeah. When you think about Infinity Saga, Infinity. Why you know, we all, we know it's about the the stones, the Infinity Stones, but when do we really get into Infinity? Really, Ultron? True. Guardians of the Galaxy when they talk about, but even then, back then they all had like most of the movies had some sort of interaction with the actual the stone. They hinted yeah, at it. They, it's there. It's in the background. It's it, it's it's a reason for this, but you don't really know the reason. Um. But hey, I don't know. Name them. Tell them. Tell us what you cool. would name them. I would do it. Yeah. Um. But let's talk about Phase Five. Let's let's go into Phase Five. I'm gonna let you know what is coming out in Phase Five. Um. There is one thing that is in here that is not. Um. Well, actually, two things that are not technically official, but I want to let you know about them. Okay. Um, I, I, I've done research, I've pulled data, and I've come up with this list. <laughs> okay. So, if, and, and th- again, this is going to include the TV shows, because I think there's no way you don't include the TV shows. Yeah, not at this uh, point. Um, and, and including the animated TV shows. Yeah, um, Stick up for animation. Uh, it's Definitely. just as important. So, phase five... I believe we uh, we're either going to start Phase Five or it, it, I think it can start with What If Season Two. Right now, it's listed early 2023, so that spot uh, is the how we open. Maybe could be true, could not be true, but it could move around there. I'm just listing at the top. But the first film we start with Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania in February of 23. Then we lead into Secret Invasion in the spring, Guardians of the Galaxy 
in May of 23. Then we go back to the TV shows with Echo during the summer. Loki season two during the summer. Mm, I'm excited for that. The Marvels, July of 23. In the fall, we get X-Men 97. Blade, November. Uh, X-Men 97. That's not a cartoon? That is the cartoon, yes. Okay, good. That is the animated, yeah. The, okay. the continuation of the animated series. So then we hit Blade, in November of 2023. Sometime in the fall, Ironheart. Ooh. We go into, and this is one of my guesses, a possible Spider-Man film, winter 2023. And I'll tell you why. Then after, we have Agatha, Coven of Chaos. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sometime in winter of 2023 to 2024, so anywhere between December and February, we have Agatha, the, the TV series. Yeah. We have an untitled film, February of 2024. We have Daredevil, Born Again, Spring 2024. Captain America, New World Order, May 2024. The Thunderbolts film, July 2024. And at some point in 2024, we're also getting Marvel Zombies and Spider-Man Freshman Year, the animated series. Jeez, that's a lot. This is a, a ridiculous amount. This is stacked. Yeah. This is stacked. So right off the bat, we are getting our team up film, but not the team up we thought would happen. Thunderbolts. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. Me too, because Thunderbolts are a little bit different from your regular Marvel heroes. I think this is this is new territory. Yeah, uh, this is, and it's kind of like what I kind of said last week about DC. Uh, Thunderbolts are technically people that are not hero heroes usually. Um, that team dynamic, I'm excited to watch it. It's been, you know, years in the making. I mean, we don't even know who the team could be. At this point, I'm hoping they become what the defenders couldn't be. <laughs> oh, sweet defenders! Yo, oh man, I was really excited for that. I, I felt I felt bad for Nelson because he was excited more than anyone, but he was disappointed <laughs> too. <laughs> the defender. My God. I mean, <laughs> I. I'm oh the, God, I'm the fanboy. I enjoyed it, but ah, uh, what it could have been. <laughs> I enjoyed it for what it was. My Lord, what a waste of a uh, Sporny Weaver. What a waste. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, we can leave it at that. Yeah, what we, can it at that. we can leave it at that. <laughs> but we have a lot to look forward to here. I mean, um, we're obviously excited for what if. Uh, the first season was amazing, um, and the animation style, the Ooh. stories they were going with, um, you know, one of the, I know one of the planned episodes, because it was scrapped for for season one, but there was the Gamora at the end that had the full Thanos suit and the double blade. There oh, will be an episode cool. dedicated to her. Wow. Um, so, you know, we, we, at the very least, I, I can confidently say I'm, I'm excited to see what they bring no matter what they bring because they had ideas in season one that i would have never thought of some some we knew of some we thought of but there were others that were just like left field um we'll probably get another a heartfelt episode like dr strange episode um a lot to look forward to and what if but then ant-man bring me jonathan majors bring me king <laughs> I heard he was gonna be in the movie. Please don't let it just be like a five minute, two minute. No, thing. no, no. He's the villain of the movie. Oh, thank, thank no, goodness. No, 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 no. He is the thank villain goodness. of Quantum Mania. We'll obviously get into what this means later, but yes, he is the main villain of that film. That much is clear. Um, uh, and during Comic Con, there was this beautiful poster that came out where he's pretty much taken almost all of the posters. Thank it's you. I mean I think in equal size you have Ant Man Wasp and then equal to them is Kang. And he's in the full getup. He is in the the blue faced purple yeah. mask type of thing. I, I mean, saw that. I I yeah I'm that, so excited. I think even just saying that and I have fun with the quantum stuff. Quantum mania. Yeah, um, I love the Ant Man movies. 
They're my. They're some of my favorite movies. Yeah, especially I will the say, first one. I really enjoyed the first the one. The first one is it's the perfect heist movie, and then you add MCU on top. Exactly, that's, that's me. really it. That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> um, Secret Invasion. I'm, a lot to look forward to there. I'm a little worried about that. Are is, you? Uh, how far do you think they're, they'll take Secret Invasion? Because Secret Invasion, that's what I'm worried about. Not far. I don't think they will take it far. Um, I don't think it will be the Secret Invasion event. I just don't. I think this is another way to say um, a Nick Fury show without calling it Nick Fury. That's what I. That's what I'm thinking. But Amelia Clark is in it. That has me excited enough. I'll, I'll, I'll be. I'll be honest. Uh, I'll be honest. That has me excited. Enough. I like that's looking funny. at her. She's just not that great of an actress. You I'm, don't think she's a good actress? I don't. I've seen no? her movies. She's not. She's. She's all right. Her movies are very. Okay, well maybe her agent needs to get fired. <laughs> I mean, she she's she. I mean, she's great in Game of Thrones, obviously, but her other movie. I think she was all right in Solo. But you her, know, I, I I liked her in Solo. Yeah, me too. Like a lot though, because like, I think I, I it do. worked for her. I, I guess so maybe that. her I, agent does need to be fired. I, I, I and, and <laughs> you know what? I won't fight. I won't fight you. She is in Terminator Genesis. I will not fight you. <laughs> Yeah. I won't fight you. I won't fight you. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. The ending of this James Gunn run of Guardians. I mean, James Gunn has been on a roll, on a roll, on a roll, on a roll. He had one of our favorite shows this year, um, Peacemaker. We will continue to say that. Yes. Um, one of the greater TV shows uh, in uh, superhero genre. And for Just, DC, a rare win. I think... I think just in general you yeah can say of that. course just a general blanket statement not even just dc marvel just gr one of the great superhero shows it, well dc fans have to come to terms with the fact that john cena might be your tony stark <laughs> <laughs> wow could you imagine could you imagine not only is it the character of peacemaker but it's john cena i would have never saw that coming i hope, pun, I hope the intended. Zack snyder fans die in horror that's so funny <laughs> Um, and there's a lot in Guardians. I really hope you know we go deep into Rocket, uh, his origin, and then we have um Adam Warlock. So a lot to be excited there. Who was casted as that? I forgot. Will I, Powter. Will uh, Will Powter. Yeah. And when I heard the casting, I said, "Serious? Like <laughs> the kid from Where the Millers?" Or, yeah. And then I googled him, and I saw what he looked like today, and I said, <laughs> "Oh." <laughs> Okay. That's why that boy's been in the gym. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, I'm with it. He was good. The little we've seen of him so far. Yeah. No. No. I definitely enjoy him as an actor. Um. I did not realize the transformation he had gone through. <laughs> um. To not look prepubescent. Um, <laughs> that was my biggest concern, and that quickly went away. So I was like, all right. Cool. All right. Yeah. Right, I'm We're down. It. Um. Echo. I think. Um. I'm not familiar e with that. Echo is the character in Hawkeye. The uh, Maya. Oh. The, uh, the, 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 the gang member that is, um, I want to say uh, she's either fully deaf or hearing impaired. Yeah. That superhero who um, is going against Kingpin. And I do believe it is confirmed that um, Vincent D'Onofrio is going to be uh, attached to Echo. Please, so, no one else can play him at that point. Yeah, no, no, no. So we're definitely getting um, our our if if we're getting anything from the Netflix uh, Marvel shows, we're getting the crown jewel. We're getting um, uh, Charlie Cox, Matt Murdock, and Vincent D'Onofrio, Kingpin. Um, that will be the echo. I think a show about this character, this minority um, that we've never really we haven't seen in the MCU just yet. We've gotten hints at it in Hawkeye. I, I, I'm excited for the ride. Um, but we need characters like her. Yeah, I, I do agree. Um, Loki season two, I think that goes without saying. That's going to be awesome. Yes. Um, more the, time stuff, more Owen Wilson. More Owen Wilson. Get, get him on the boat that he wanted. <laughs> the Marvels, really excited for that, especially after Miss Marvel. I know we didn't really go deep into what we thought of miss marvel but um you know what I i'll say this right my my i love the idea but you know one thing when i watched the movie for you know captain marvel like at the end of you didn't really learn anything about her 
like what was important to cap like as a character what, what do you think was important to captain marvel you know and i don't know if i can to your point probably i can't answer that um one of the biggest things that I enjoyed about Captain Marvel that I did not enjoy about Black Panther was that the entire movie, Captain Marvel struggled from the beginning to the end. She was in a struggle. True. Was she in certain parts? Was she OK with the struggle? Yeah, but she had a conflict. I think that's my that was always my biggest problem with Black Panther and why I liked Captain Marvel so much. But on the flip side, we know T'Challa through and through anybody could write uh, a, a long essay about his values, his stance, his beliefs. Like we know that character because of the, the amazing portrayal we got yeah. from Chadwick Boseman. Um, from Captain Marvel, I agree. I think the, the thing I left wanting the most was actually more of her past me too um you know there was a lot of scenes of her just like having a struggle as a child a struggle as a teen a struggle as a cadet but more background information as to what made her her i think um was needed i wanted to because i'm sorry i'm a huge captain marvel fan yeah and I wanted a more personal journey. I was hoping to get that in the sequel. We got that personal journey in Miss Marvel. So I I, yeah. can, I think I can see your concern. We're having Miss Marvel and Photon yeah. also part of the sequel. And they've had really good character journeys on the show, on in WandaVision. Their, in, 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 yeah, in their shows. She hasn't had the same. Um, she's, then, so, she's had moments. Right. That's it. Yeah, and then she had moments in Endgame. Yeah, great moments, but still moments moments so i mean will there be enough time could be could not be uh, surprise me yep we have to see the x-men 97 show um just a continuation of the animated series if x-men evolution no not x-men evolution the, oh. the one from the 90s the x-men x-men the animated series. No, 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 no. oh there wow go. really they're going that far back you know, however it end it well it ends with i believe it ends with charles going to space and leaving the x-men really? i you believe that's put that out there no no that's how the the original oh series oh, ended it i never watched like, the original ended like, you never watched it as a kid growing up i was up? in haiti oh <laughs> okay. oh so you didn't get upn <laughs> sir no, no okay. I, I i when i came to america it was x-men evolutions that was on uh, yeah and that's how i got into so this. hold on hold on really important question because i don't know if i can do this podcast further um have you not seen the animated Spider-Man series from the 90s? No. I have not seen it. <laughs> I have not seen it. <laughs> Wait, why is that so important? The only thing, the only thing I remember from my childhood, my dad always brought me VHS of anime, Pokemon, and Dragon Ball. That's it. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. And right. sometimes we call it like I, I cannot things. blame young Demir for this. Yeah. However, I wanted to. Speaking I think for everyone, the Spider-Man and the X-Men animated series from the 90s is what we lived for every week to watch on Saturday morning. It <laughs> is lit like you can watch it today and it's still quality animated TV. Wow. It is not hokey. The storylines are true comic storylines. Um so I would say watch. I know X Men, the original X Men, is on Disney Plus. They put it ah. on Disney Plus, and at Comic Con they announced that there were some. I, I I don't know if you remember when Disney Plus first launched that the Simpsons had kind of an issue. Do you remember the issue that they had? No, I don't remember. So, um, obviously we watch TV now in, whoops, in sixteen by nine. Oh. Oh, so, now I remember. Yeah, the Simpsons show was n uploaded in 16 by 9. So for a lot of the earlier seasons, um, some of the jokes were cut off because it was made for 4-3 um, aspect ratio. And a lot of the things were cut off. So like little visual jokes here and there were just not present. Oh, yeah. And, you know, to Disney's credit, they fixed, they it. fixed it. Yeah. They allowed you to watch in either format. So you could watch in 4-3. You know, not everybody wants to do that because I mean, it's pretty... Uh it looks dated yeah. <laughs> but if you if you're looking to watch something old in in what it was supposed to be and get everything that you're supposed to get that's what you do um so x-men had a similar issue where some of the episodes um 
the way it was uploaded, not because of Disney's doing, but because of how just the order count yeah. was um, off um, based on like how it actually premiered and how the actual storyline goes. They um, during that weekend of Comic Con, they gave the announcement that it was going to get updated so that you it is in the correct or the correct viewing order, essentially. Ah, in Disney nice. Plus. So, if anybody was ever bored and wanted to watch old '90s cartoons that uh, shaped probably all of us today, go watch it. I'm, I'm down for it. I'll, I'll probably try. And to check especially it out. Spider-Man, I cannot stress that that is the greatest. That is probably. Um, I watch the X-Men because I never, I never, I never even thought about it because I always just watch X-Men Evolutions. Yep, yeah, it's just, uh, just some of the greatest Spider-Man stories are in that um Maybe. in that animated series so definitely worth checking out um but we have that continuation basically so i mean just the fact that we're continuing something that ended in the 90s that's cool <laughs> that's awesome that's bold yep um we have blade Mahershala ali that's the only thing we know and that's all i need to know yeah. i'm there but i have my ticket let's go and I, I love the supernatural aspect. I I'm, I'm very I love that, that the MCU is going that route too. I'm very excited for that. Um, Ironheart show. Yes. Um, we did get a piece of Peace. her in the um, Black Panther trailer. She's there in Wakanda for some reason. What? Don't know. I'm <laughs> here for it. Um, you know we have our Riri Williams. I'm excited for that. Now here's where I here's where we we talk. I have here listed. It's not. It wasn't announced by Kevin or anything or at Comic Con. Yeah. But a possible Spider-Man film. Really. Winter of 2023. The reason I have this here is because there's this rumor that's out there. It's not confirmed by any means and it's legitimate. I don't know, but there is a rumor that under the current Sony deal, the the deal that Sony has to have Spider-Man's rights. They have to release something regarding Spider-Man every two years into the theaters. At first, that theory didn't really make that much sense to me because there was some time yeah. between the Orange and Garfield movies. And, A lot of time, actually. Um, well, not... It has to be Spider-Man, not Spider-Man related, or can it be that? Yeah, actually, I think Spider-Man just has to appear in, in theaters, which and now that I'm thinking about it, Spider Amazing Spider-Man 2 finished it came out in 2015 and civil war came out 2016 ah so that counts i th I, I think that counts oh okay because they lent their character and then 2017 we get a film so then every two years you i mean every two years we have gotten a spider-man film something spider-man um that is part of the reason why we got no way home at the end of 2022 because last time we got a spider-man film 2019 if you don't count the COVID year, because you can count a COVID year, um, it kind of aligns. Yeah, I don't know. So the rumor out there is um, we'll get a Spider-Man film, a, a Spider-Man four, end of 2023. Could it happen? I very much think so. Why not? And technically, Disney is not allowed to announce that movie because it's a Sony oh. movie. <laughs> no wonder. Okay, that makes I mean, sense. And 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 I think when Phase Three was announced originally. Spider-Man is not in that announcement. Yeah, yeah, because, no, I didn't see it there. Because he was he was not announced as a character yeah. until that trailer from Civil War came out. You know, that was the first instance that we knew Spider-Man was coming into the to MCU. Put him in. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he's only in that. Yeah, exactly. In that, it's two scenes. That's it. So, possible Spider-Man movie. Agatha Show. Wait, okay. Do you think this was like a last minute decision, or do you think this was planned from the beginning? I loved her in WandaVision. I, I loved love her the in actress. WandaVision. I, lo I love <laughs> Catherine Hunt. Yeah. Do we need an Agatha show? Maybe it's not about need anymore. Maybe it's about indulgence. Could be. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I will hold judgment because uh, I'll say this. It does lend us to more supernatural. That's true. And by that alone, and actually, well, not just alone, we have um, such a great actress that was so committed to that role. Um, and the possibilities are endless of what that 
entails like what do witches in the mcu entail i'm down <laughs> I, i'm down for that me too then here, here's where i did some more digging so whenever a, a, a company like a disney a universal a 20th century fox they they all had to fight for you know the same release dates so they had to file it um with uh the united states and every other market so the Disney filings of their movies are out there in order to protect um, creatively what things are. Um, sometimes they'll list the movie and sometimes they won't, but they'll list it as an untitled properly property. Um, we see that a lot with Star Wars. We can see Star Wars mo movies booked out for years in advance, but we don't know what it is. And that's because uh, Star Wars decides we're going to do it. So we'll figure it out. And that was probably their detriment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then we have, you know, James Cameron, you know, with Avatar. He has a whole bunch of Avatar movies just booked out. Yeah, even though for like next, Avatar, yeah, for like the God next knows 10 how years. Many years. Oh, 10 um, years. Yeah, yeah, 10 years. Yeah, he has 10 years worth of Avatar movies planned out. Um, and they're there in filings, just untitled Avatar movies. So I went and did digging and found the untitled Marvel movies that were not part of the phase announcement this uh in comic-con so we have an untitled movie in february of 2024 mm -hmm. in between what would be blade and the next captain america movie what do you think it would be i mean we there's so many options as far as movies we could be getting deadpool mm, Shang right, it's under marvel shang chi now. sequel eternals sequel Mutant I don't think film. they're going to go with an Eternal sequel. I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't think so either. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the rumors out there. I'll tell you that much. Um, I think what makes the most sense is Deadpool. Yeah. Um, it's been a while. Yeah, and um, you know, the first Deadpool also came out in February of its respective year. It would keep in line with a the theme. I don't <laughs> Valentine's know. Day. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was the, that whole thing that it came out uh, on the Valentine's Day weekend. So. Um, I think it's possible we can get Deadpool um, as 2024. I mean, 2020, our 2022 is ending. That's a short time away. I mean, yeah. I'd be excited. And I know Ryan Reynolds is working on of it. Course. So that's a possibility. Then we have Daredevil Born Again, Spring 2024. I mean, I'm excited, but still, is are it, you worried? Uh, well, yes, of course, because it's, it's, it's gone from Netflix to Marvel. And Marvel has a certain standard that I think it's applied across the MCU that I don't think really fits with. And what standard is that? Like, which is you know the one, the humor, um, the uh, the tone, the overall tone, right? And the need to be, like I said, self-referential. The, the the Daredevil shows was very self-contained, like very very low-key street type of hero, and it was. Even and dark, even yeah, exactly. It was dark, even if it wasn't like gory. It had really, really high levels Actually, of violence. I mean, kind of gory too. I mean, yeah. audio wise, when it, it's not saw, but you know, you knew what was happening. No, I mean, remember that that first season, that scene where Kingpin the squishes door? the yeah the door. Yeah, you hear it. Yeah, you hear it. I think I think it was I think it came out that it was a watermelon that they used. That's that's <laughs> disgusting. That's gory. But um, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, I think what's gonna happen. We know that Daredevil, based off of promos, is gonna show up in this season of She Hulk. Yeah. Um, in a new suit, um, the yellow and red suit from the comics. That's what we're seeing. Um, from based on the the little bit of promo that we got. I think this is my guess. We. Because She-Hulk is primarily uh, a comedy, um, from what we've seen so far, um, at least that's how I'm taking it. Um, I think we get the jokey jokes from Daredevil out of the way there. I do think they're going to go dark. You think so? I, I hope think, so. I think so. I mean, I think if we have a Blade movie, possibly a rated R um, Deadpool movie, because that's what everybody seems to be pushing for. Please. And I do, And I do think they can do it. I mean... Deadpool and Deadpool, I think one and two and Logan just reached Disney Plus that weekend of oh, Comic Con. Nice. So we have rated our movies on Disney Plus. I don't see why we wouldn't go rated R. 
and I uh, for Deadpool uh, three and or what would be the new Deadpool one or whatever, however you call it. <laughs> um, and I don't see how we don't go dark for Daredevil. I, it, Daredevil is my second favorite MC uh, Marvel character, if comic wise, and you can't not go dark. Yeah, that's um. It, it, the themes it are only, just there. Exactly, it only works as a dark superhero. That's the problem, though, right? How much does the how much is is Marvel and Disney's size gonna affect the actual creative property, right? Because you know they want to make their money. But yeah, it's a business. Time, at the end of the day, like you said, like you were saying, it's a corporation. Exactly. You know? Um, their 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 damn motivation is only profit. That's it. Um, I don't think they'll go that because I think they're smarter than that. I think so. Yeah. So I I do think. We but I think it's dark. a legitimate worry. Um, you know, I I'll take it. You know, I, I won't disagree that it's a worry. Like a thirty um, seventy type for me. Yeah, because there is no property that is dark. I was th I'm trying to think like of everything in the past of the MCU that's come out. There are dark moments. Um, cutting off Thanos's head. That's pretty dark. Yeah, that was. Um. There's there's a, there's there's dark moments here and there, but um, uh, uh, some of the scary. I mean, I think you know what gives me hope, the fact that Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness, there are oh, aspects of horror. That's there, true. There are true aspects of Done horror. Done really well. Yeah. Would it, is it a horror movie? Eh, yeah, debatable. Yeah, yeah. But there are aspects there that are just truly scary. So I think we can go. We can get there. Um, Captain America: New World Order. I'm really freaking excited. Me too. I am very supportive of seeing Anthony Mackie in this role. I think um, for all the faults of the, the the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, if you just watch the last episode and him flying in that suit, it's so good. It's it's the comic books. So it if works. we can if we can get that in a movie, which I th like like I said um, previously before, I I do think. One of our biggest issues. It's I'm gonna keep repeating it. It's six episode count is not it um, for stories. So if we get a, just a two hour flushed out movie, and if we can get that in the same vein of the Winter Soldier, God, that would be. If we can get us if we can get another a, a, another spy movie. I'm yeah, taking it. give yeah. me a spy movie. I don't need an MCU interconnectivity. <laughs> Fine, do it in the Thunderbolts. Do it next. Has a director been announced yet for that movie? No, um, there hasn't been a director announced and i think there still isn't a confirmed director for actually for a lot of these movies i would figure i, it's I, I know airman has peyton reed um oh nice of course uh, he yeah he, yeah he's gonna finish guardians is james gunn i don't think there i don't know of a director attached to blade attached to captain marvel attached to thunderbolts attached to i i there is a director attached to the marvels but i couldn't even tell you who it is oh no it, I know who it is. Um, I can't. I don't remember their name, but it's not the same directors as the first movie. I can tell you that much. Okay. And the director of the Marvels is the same person who directed recently Candyman. Oh wow! With Yaya Abdul Mateen. I love that movie. Uh, I think that I think that movie only did not perform well because of COVID. Yeah, of course. Uh, just didn't have the opportunity. And I I, I, I do, forgot um, about it at some point. We forgot about it. Yeah. Because, yeah, we saw a trailer, then it came out the next year. I mean, it, it's yeah. what happened to a lot of them, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, no director for Captain uh, Captain America for, but I'm excited to see um, Anthony Mackie suit up again. Thunderbolts. We, you know, we kind of touched upon that. Who is this team? What is this team? I, for for the for the criticism of lack of connectivity amongst this first. The, phase of the saga there are a lot of hints of thunderbolts characters yeah spread out everywhere um to say that we still don't know what val um julia louis dreyfus character is doing out there is true we don't know what she's doing yeah <laughs> um but He's they, intriguing they, character. They, they, i think yeah. that fully goes into thunderbolt i just don't see yeah. any other way um just fully that's where that goes so and I'm, so far, I think we've only confirmed American soldier, right? A U.S. soldier. U.S. Walker, yeah. Uh, U.S. One of those names, yes. <laughs> um, um, uh, Wyatt Russell, yes. Yeah. That that character. 
Uh, yeah, I would say she's the only one on her. Oh, well, Florence Pugh, too. No. Uh, oh, have they yeah. hinted her at the, at that role too? Well, Florence Pugh is um. Yelena was approached by Bao at the end of Black Widow. And Did I miss it? No, no. I th we've talked about it before. Oh, so. okay. I must have forgot. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ooh, I, I just don't think in Hawkeye, like, you don't see Val at all. So, I mean, it was the, just the post credit scene. Okay, but that's I, why. I, I mean, if I had to give a guess of who the Thunderbolts will be, I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there that I think it will be, like, U.S. Walker, U.S. Agent. I think it is U.S. Agent. Um, oh, yeah, U.S. Agent, um, Black Widow, Yelena, Black Widow. I think we bring back Zemo. Ah, that's perfect. Um, I think, you know, we do bring in Emil Blonsky, uh, Abomination, um, because this is connected to Thaddeus mm. Ross. And I would even bring in maybe, I don't know, a scroll from Secret Invasion, somebody um, to tie that in. That's just my lineup as a guest. Or Maria Hill. I don't know. Um, mm, I think so. If I was right, I'd retire by now. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah, a possibility. Yeah, I mean, as, just as a quick thought, who would that team be? I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody in the comments. Leave the Thunderbolts. Um, I'd love to know uh, what you guys think. Uh, but just off the top of my head, that's who I think the team up could be. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Uh, those types of superheroes... Perfect encapsulates what I think. A and I think the one that excites me the most is Zemo. Zemo, yes. Yeah. He has for, such great chemistry with everyone he talks with. Yeah. <laughs> for 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 as amazing as Civil War is, the problem is you have no real. I I think that problem. Uh, if I had to pick something about that movie, it's Zemo and the lack of. Zemo was way better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier than yes, it was in Civil yes. War, but we can obviously say Civil War is better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, I don't think that's an issue with the Russo brothers. I think it's an issue of, you know, your villain is really Tony Stark. So he was a villain of convenience. Yeah. He, so, yeah. you know, you know, and because of civil war. So, yeah. um, we don't get Zemo villain, but I mean, I'm excited to see more Zemo. Yeah, me too. And then the I, I, too. at one point, like I said, Marvel zombies, Spider-Man freshman year, the animated series. Is a multiversal story, so it's it's the same Spider-Man from. It is the origin of Spider-Man in cartoon form, but in an another multiverse. Yeah. Yes, because it's what if it wasn't Tony who showed up at the apartment that day? It was Norman Osborn. No, wow. So it's a multiversal story that is not connected but they said the same thing about what if so who knows <laughs> they did yeah they made that explicitly clear in the beginning it's not connected oh maybe, uh, maybe. yeah maybe. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know who knows um and then uh marvel zombies um no expectations just give me zombies i'm okay yeah but that's fine sometimes yeah. you need to indulge in, like i said in, in animated form i'll take it. yeah me too so then we have phase six a lot of this we can't talk about um but this is what I've done. Phase six was announced at Comic Con, and there were eleven properties on the screen. Only three of them were actually announced. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you what they are. After Thunderbolts, we have Fantastic Four of that same year in November. Then we go into the next year, 2025, Avengers: The King Dynasty, and mm -hmm. November: Avengers: Secret Wars. Let's, let's stop there. Let's stop there. That's insane. All, all the, all the doubt, all the this, all the that. Two Avengers movies. I, I Is it like eight months apart? Six months? Six months apart. Oh my! It's insane. Obviously, they're doing it back to back, like Lord of the Rings did. Yeah, I mean, well, they filmed. They also filmed. Um, you know. Infinity War and Endgame at the same time. Oh, yeah, time. they did. They did. So they just released it in two different years. Um, <sighs> and Fantastic Four is not that. It's uh, only, what, a few months before? Yeah, before. Uh, May. Uh, you, you go from November to May. Oh, man. That's wild. I, th I thought they would be introduced sometime earlier than that. I'll be honest. Yeah, with you. because they got announced when Phase 4 got announced. Yeah. They, they were announced as a TBA, kind of like Blade. Um, I, I, I really think, I think this is going to be a blessing in disguise that they get 
of their movie so late i think i do think they've had not issues but they're they're honing in on what is the story we're gonna tell who is the director that we're gonna have who is who is the cast take the time because and if you if you i think if they're ready to announce a date that means they're pretty close we'll probably get cast at d23 in two weeks you know what's funny i don't think there would be so much hype surrounding the fantastic forecasting if there if the other two movies previously weren't such huge failures Even yeah i i actually really enjoyed the first one it's one of my, actually one of my most watched superhero movies the first one a, a another rare instance where the sequel just <laughs> compared to the first and yeah. um Ooh. I think the first one like that casting is not bad, but it's yeah. it's kind of like and, and I don't even know if iconic is the right word, but you you remember that cast. Yeah, of course. You ben just Graham, know it. You Chris just know Evan, it. I mean, yeah. it's Captain America. Jessica you know it. Alba. Yeah, it's 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 I think it's a great Ben Grimm casting. Yeah. Um uh dude from the shield. Yeah, the guy from the shield. Um so We've all fan casted. We've all set our opinion on who should be Fantastic Four. I think at this point we just let it wait. I think I do think we get prediction. I do think we get the cast. I don't think it's a big prediction. I think we get the cast announcement in two weeks. Um, I'm just excited that we have a date. I'll take a date. I don't even think we have a director attached yet. Mm. But if I'm not mistaken, the rumored director that is set to sign on is I don't remember his name right now, and I'll bring it up next episode, but it is uh, one of the directors from WandaVision. Mm, that's perfect. I, I love <laughs> I think that. So. I, I love think that so. TV show. So, you know, you have that. But like I had said before, um, I did look through the filings of the movies, right? Mm -hmm. So what I did was is I cross-referenced the time that they put on that image that came out yeah. versus the movies that they have in their filings. And this is what I think will happen based off of what should be a movie and what should be a TV show. I think we actually start phase six. Um, you know, we ended um, phase five with Thunderbolts in July. We start phase six with a TV show in the fall. Then we go to uh, September, uh, October. Then we go into Fantastic Four in November. We get another fall TV show. So I think we get that TV show in November. End of November. We get another TV show, Winter 2025. That's the only thing? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Like it's listed. It's listed on the on that image. Yeah, that's true. If you go back. It's already listed. So I'm just cross-referencing what I know is a movie thing versus and everything else I'm guessing is a TV show. They're really ramping up. So yeah, we have, yeah, fall 2024 winter show. Then... um actually uh, so that that could be sometime in november december because the next show is listed winter 2025 and it's before it has to be a tv show because there is another winter property and that is listed as a movie february 14th of 2025 so i think that winter 20 show the uh, tv show comes out december january movie in february then we have two TV shows come out in spring 2025 before Avengers The King Dynasty. Another unannounced TV show, summer 2025, so I'm thinking sometime in June, kind of like when Miss Marvel was. Yeah. Then Untitled Movie, July 2025. Then Avengers Secret Wars in November. Oh, shit. There's so there's much up. Some this that movie in so my I, God. We're talking four movies in 2025. Jesus. In February, May, July, November. Those are listed as Marvel movies in their filings. I mean, the the, the, the list of future projects that are, have been rumored in development. Here's here's the full list that I have. Deadpool, like I had said earlier, Shang-Chi 2, Eternals 2, a mutant film. We, 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 we don't have a mutant film on the books. That's true. We have an untitled... Scarlett Johansson film, but I want to preface that it's not her in the role. So we don't know um, what the Scarlett Johansson film is. We just know there's a film she's attached. I'll take it. Yeah. 
I mean, I I would imagine eventually down the line they they probably do something with Florence Pugh. Or right, do you think she's gonna stick to the shows? I would think she'd be attached. Um, I think you know what happens. Um, I think she gets her movie because she has a film coming out this year. Don't worry, darling. Um, Olivia Wilde's um next film. I heard about with that. Harry Styles. I hear it's crazy. I think this puts her. I think this is going to be the movie that puts her on the map. I mean, she's been in a lot of things: Midsummer, then Black Widow, then Hawkeye, now this. I mean, her trajectory is only going up. That's true. So I think she gets her MCU movie. Then, in terms of series, we have an Armor Wars series that was announced at one point and seemed to have disappeared. I have not heard about that since. That's the um, the Don Cheeto War Machine show. Oh wow! Yeah. I can't believe he stole. Is he, is there any word on that at all? Because I have not heard. It was announced. It was announced by Kevin Feige. Actually, I think at the last D twenty three, when they went over like a bunch of projects, there there's a logo for it. There's a lot on it. Wow. It's just where is it on the map? I don't. I just don't think they've announced the place. Okay. There is a rumor <clears throat> of like Ten Rings series. Oh. Okay. I'm taking that. Wow. There is a rumor of a Wakanda series. That would have worked very well, I think. I'm also taking that. Um, both of those being helmed by um, their respective directors, Ryan Coogler and Daniel nice. Creston. Um, then the next one it could be a series. It could be a film, Nova. I don't know how we haven't gotten a Nova movie yet. What? I, 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 I no think that's way. I think that's the a, a clear easy yeah bucket like yeah. what are you talking about yeah. and I, and I want Sam Alexander and if Kevin you're listening I'm a young Spanish boy I can play him. <laughs> oh my god I will pretend like I'm from Texas I will play him shoot Put, your shot huh? hire me hire, hire me put me in the gym we can I'll do send this. I'll send this episode personally you, Kevin you did it with Chris Pratt you could do this again make me the MCU person um. I, I think that Nova is, especially the Sam Alexander version, just a complete douche. <laughs> I've been hearing uh, rumors about Nova for like five, six years now. Being the same way we've been hearing about Green Lantern rumors, yeah. because they're basically the same character. True. Um, it, I, I get it. The scale of that is hard, mm-hmm. but I think, you know, that character Nova is core. very, I, I think it's a very good character to make, um, We've gotten, I don't know. I just think Nova, that that's a, that's an easy one, and then a Wonder Man series. Ah, I heard about that. I heard I'm about hearing that. more and more about it. Since I, I I am hearing a lot about it. I forgot who was the director that was attached to it, um, but they were adamant that that is what they wanted to make, and I know it's a director we like. So I just heard that uh, name. Uh, st- was it Steven Slater or whatever his name was? The the guy who played uh. Who played that guy in um the villain in uh, Iron Man you know Three? The guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yes. The uh, fake uh, 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 Mandarin. Um, ben Crossley. Yes, Ben Cross. I love that guy. Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley. Yes. And he, I, I heard he's he's, he's casting yeah, a movie. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I, I have heard that he's getting even more attached to future things. What that means, <laughs> I don't know. The the fact that he came up in Shang Chi and actually was not terrible. Yeah. I was. I love it. that. I was with it. It made sense, of course. It was kind of like a redemption, to be honest. I, th- I do think it was a redemption to what they did in Iron Man three. I really, uh, I agree with you. Um, and and before we end, I I can't. I have to mention it. There are MCU movies dated till after Phase six. Already. So we have possible. I uh, uh, date. Well, well, no, we have dates for what could be dubbed Phase seven. Uh, February 2026, May 2026, July 2026, and November 2026. So okay. back-to-back years of four MCU movies. I mean, the MCU is on a rampage. Uh, it's it's like we've said before. Will it be its detriment? I don't think so. I have hope. Could it be? I think that's a big possibility. We'll make that judgment once we see the final product. I mean, uh, we definitely will. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I think, but overall... You know, there are so many properties out there um, that they have such a landscape. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we're not even thinking about Doc 
Doctor Strange 3. I, yeah, I, I, I do think that will happen because uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is very much attached to continuing to play this role. I do think we get a Thor 5. Yeah, at this point, I mean, there's been four Thor movies. And it's the fr- it yeah, he's the first character. Signs of stopping. He he will be. He will continue to be Thor. Um, and and honestly, um, I love Taika. If he does Thor a, a Thor five to do a Taika trilogy, cool. If we grab another director to take Thor in even in an even different direction. I'm cool with that too because I think Chris Hemsworth is talented enough to take that character even further. What about what about the rumors saying that that last sort of uh, that moment in She-Hulk episode two where uh, you know Mark Ruffalo went out into space, you and know? now there's rumors for World War Hulk. Um, I, would, I would die because my biggest regret, even though I love the Russo brothers, I hated the, what they did Hulk. I detested in every every. Oh, uh, Professor Hulk. Not Professor Hulk. The fact that they guttered him at. One, they made his 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 character uh, comedic relief. Yes, yeah. they made it comedic relief. The Hulk only works best when you don't know what the fuck he's gonna do. I think that's true. Um, I, I I like this idea that um, he has it figured out. Not in the sense of is it good for the story? Is it good to watch? Is it good to this? I kind of actually just feel like for the character for Bruce. I like the idea that he has calm in his life and has, you know, a sense of figuring it out. He has his bachelor pad in Mexico. Destroyed. You literally took the words out. <laughs> we need to just fuck, fuck this fuck shit it up. all up. Fuck it. That's up. what happens in the comics all the time. I heard. I heard. Like I, I'm hearing, like the based off of the World War Hulk storyline, that carrier, that that spaceship carrier, came in to send a message. Hey, your son is over here in Sakaar. Come get him. And then we get the storyline of the son of Hulk and oh. how he's even crazier and more unhinged than actual Hulk. Um, Yo, that's an insane, insane, insane Still my storyline. favorite comic I'm, I'm, story of all time. World War Hulk. Planet Hulk and World War Hulk. Number one. I don't know how you don't do that i don't know how we don't get into red hulk unfortunately you know obviously it's not gonna be betty ross uh thaddeus ross um, yeah, yeah. Betty make ross. it betty ross screw it yeah actually you just recast her isn't the actor for for thunderbolt ross isn't he then he passed away yeah he passed away yeah. which is why i don't i, I mean i would have loved to have seen him in any capacity yeah as great. red hulk but you know he was older i don't think he was gonna yeah. do the mocap and and like you said he, he did pass away so um him as Red Hulk, we don't see, but you know, there that there there is so much room for the Hulk um, storyline. Do we get it? I don't know. I need that savage. I'm tired of Hulk. I just don't know if we get it because of the the whole contract that Universal owns the Hulk rights. That's true. So do we get it? I don't know. I mean, but then again, we never knew Spider Man would come, and he did so. I just don't want the last fight scene with the Hulk to be the one where he loses against Thanos. That's Please. true. That is true. And you see, and you see it in She-Hulk. He's still ridiculous, bro. He threw that damn boulder into space. Yeah, it, went, it, it turned into like a reverse comet. It was it went on fire. I mean, what? I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe maybe one of those films is a Hulk movie, and they, you know they're just working out the contract, or maybe. The contract expires. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot yeah, of speculation. I don't even need a movie. I just need a good Hulk fight. That's it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, last thing I, I want to say. Um, it, this phase is now completely. It, it, we're in unprecedented territory. We knew what phase four was going to be for the most part. There were changes here and there. And we now know. We'll know where things fall in phase five and six. So we're. Not where we were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, where everything is as it comes. No, now, now we have this game plan. There's a lot to discuss about it. There's a lot to fight over, speculate. To speculate. Here's what I want to speculate. And I, I, it'll be my last question for you. We're getting the, those Avengers movies. I think that's the big thing. 
and, and it's it's especially the big thing is the titles kang dynasty into secret yeah oh i didn't even think about that. like how did how do we go king i mean it's just how do we get there and and you know we are we secret wars storyline you know obviously has been a it, it's just as famous as the infinity war storyline um that we started in, in infinity war and an end game um, a, a lot can be done with that how do you how, I mean, do you have any guesses that like what this even means i would guess that considering the way kane's powers work you know the, the whole time manipulation thing i would and considering this is multiverse art. exactly that's what i think we're good i i because i i remember i heard there was a leaked script and there was a lot of leaked scripts where um what was around the time infinity war was coming out right it was all okay. over reddit leak scripts this leak scripts that and one of the leak scripts was uh was like avengers forever or something like that i remember this i heard about this okay what like one of the one of the main aspects of like the final battle was that um the avengers would get help from their multiversal counterpart like another captain america from another universe another iron man from another universe and that would be the team that would fill up in you know in, in battle against thanos and that sounds like something they could use, especially with the whole multiversal thing. And not only that, when it, when, it, when we're talking about jumping into secret wars, right? Like when I think about the way they adapt certain things, they tend to t they tend to take the spiritual nature of it. So I'm thinking a more of if we're talking about a dynasty here, we're talking about a long period of time. We're talking about domination that fits in line. Better not be Kang Day. Exactly right. I, yeah. I I I hope they. I think they learned enough. a lesson from that. Exactly. So I'm yeah. thinking like over a period of time, because they've done that before, right? If it's a, over a long period of time, I'm thinking it's scattered Avengers with their multiversal counterparts or different heroes from different multiverses, like fighting little battles all on their own before culminating into something bigger. Probably at the end of Secret Wars. That's my take on it. And then. Um I, I mean, obviously, our adversary is King and King Dynasty. That makes exactly. sense. Um, I, I think what you said makes sense. If you have different Avengers spread out throughout time, throughout the dynasty, fighting different kings in their different pockets, mm -hmm. that's cool. That means we have to bring them together in secret. Yeah. Kind of like Infinity War, where we have separate teams doing separate things, and that's how you lose. I have to bring it together to win, whether exactly. it's by your choice or by design. They're the Avengers. Is it Doom? Is it Galactus? Who do you think? Do you think it's just Kang and Secret Wars, or do you think we're we're, we're get to those other characters? I think it has to be just Kang. You think so? I think it has to be okay. because I think um, Doom. I don't think he'll be. He, well, okay. Well, if if I think about Doom, who how he is. He might be a factor, right? Maybe and that. We, and we know Fantastic Four is a factor. Exactly. So Doom, maybe so, but I feel like he's too much of a, of a big presence. And maybe it's just personal. I love the character too much, and I and I love his design too much, and everything about him too much. And you know what? That would be really quick for him to all of a sudden be the bad. I mean, we've been exactly. getting hints at Thanos since the beginning of the phase. Hints, 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 hints. If he just, if Doctor Doom just shows up at the, as the first film of Phase Six, and then is the ultimate designer. Yeah, I don't. Know. Unless you just say, oh no, he actually has been designing this whole time. I, I think I agree with you. It has to be Kang. Yeah, and if you want to put him on the same level with Thanos, you're gonna have to keep. You're gonna gonna have to keep focus on him. I mean, the Kang Dynasty, just like if Infinity War, has to be a Kang movie. You know what, and I and you know what I agree. Uh, what I do think, um, I do think, if we're gonna put it, if we're gonna put this, this, if we're gonna, if we're gonna put the the whole storyline. I mean, your heroes are equally as important as your villain, right? True. Your villain has to be top tier. That's what makes her. That's what sometimes is what makes or breaks the the, the movie. I'm confident that Jonathan Major can hold this. The same Me way too. I was confident in Josh Brolin, I am confident in Jonathan Major. That is a world-class actor right there. Ooh. 
You've seen him in Lovecraft. Uh, exactly. I mean, Ooh. what a what what what? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> what stupidity! <laughs> stupidity! Oh, what went on in that office to cancel that show? I, I, How do you not continue Lovecraft? Country? That's so much potential. I I don't know. How do you do that? With that being said. That is what led to that man being gang I'm and having the schedule. That was direct, direct line. I guarantee you. Thank you, HBO. <laughs> which, which is really thank you, WB, for improving the freaking MCU. Thank you for, yeah. for ruining DC yet again. <laughs> We got to do an episode on DC at some point. I mean, there's so much to talk about, and, and we do have news on it. But yeah, we can we can definitely uh, yeah. Let's let's, let's try to yeah, do yeah, one yeah, eventually. Yeah. Well, yeah. we can do that. So um, I, I I mean we we definitely have talked out um what's going on with the MCU um a lot of predictions, a lot of thoughts of what's happening right now. I uh, um I think. We have a lot to look forward to, one, but we will be back in two weeks once D23 happens. Let's see if I'm right. We get any more information, and we can just speculate on that, too. You know who you remind me of? Who? That, that meme where the guy's connecting the dots. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I promise you, coming up with that list with the with the dates, uh, oh, it's from, from, um, from It's Always Sunny. So, yeah, It's Always Sunny, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Charlie Day, like... <laughs> Connected the dots because if that movie came out there, then yeah. it has to. <laughs> Absolutely, that's that's exactly what I look like coming up on that list. I mean, it's my own personal MCU tracker list. Yeah. Uh, Game Loon Saloon activity. What do you want me to tell you? I thank you for the content, Carlos. Absolutely, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So, um, let us know in the comments um, what you guys think. You know. Um, who do you think the Thunderbolts will be? Um, who do you think the, the actual true villain is of this phase? You know, wh what do we think about the multiverse saga? Uh, let us all know. We'd love to hear your thoughts and we'd love to, uh, you know, talk about it in the next episode. Um, of course. It's been a good time. Yes, it has. All right. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. All right. Thanks, everyone.